Hello, my name is John Frala. I'm a professor here at Riojano College in charge of alternative fuels. Our program includes hydrogen fuel cells as well as electric vehicles, compressed gases, liquid natural gas, and some biodiesel. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the program and how some of the training aids and some of the things that you could learn by coming up to our program and what skills you could get to get out into the job market in a new field like it is today. So I'm going to talk about some of the training aids that we use here in the classroom to show you and demonstrate some of the new technology. So our program starts with our partnerships with the high schools and some of the RLPs. Today we have Andrew Gold here who teaches at El Rancho High School in the automotive program. And he's going to describe a little bit about what they prepare the students with before they come into our program. Andrew? Uh, we have a dual enrollment program where students can learn basic fundamentals about working as a general service technician so they can learn the skills and to pay the bills. That they can learn uh, basic fundamentals of automotive technology and then they can transfer that into the uh, college program. So they're receiving high school credit as well as college credit as well. And that's a, a certificate that they can uh, work for um, independent shops or they can just decide that they want to go into uh, the program here at Rio Hondo College. And so once Andrew's done with his program there, the, the transfer of the units up to our Rio Hondo College, some of the students can earn as much as six units and transfer into the program. So they already have college units coming into our program. And so we would start them out in the general four areas. So they would have skills that would have the fundamentals. From there, they can decide if they want to go into an automotive program, they want to go into alternative fuels or electric cars. And in some instances, they can go into our Tesla program, which we'll talk about a little bit later. This is a basic fuel cell. These are constructed with plates. And what we do is we push hydrogen gas and air through it. The chemical reaction between using the hydrogen, which is an H2 molecule, and adding oxygen to it, which is H2O, is how we get water as a byproduct. This is a green field environment right now. California has a new mandate, which is an E7920 executive order, which says by 2024, all vehicles in California that are sold will be as zero emissions. And this is part of that mandate. 95% of the vehicles sold in 2024 have to be electric, and the other 5% have to be hydrogen based. So a hydrogen vehicle is basically an electric car, but we're using hydrogen as a generator so that you don't have to plug the vehicle in like you would an electric car at night. And how we do this is we take hydrogen, and on this campus we have our own electrolyzer. So we make our own hydrogen fuel here out of distilled water or elect electrolyzed water. And as you see the light comes on, I'm actually generating voltage right now. My meter went dead, of course. I'm producing about six and a half volts right now by pushing hydrogen through this unit here and the fan pushes oxygen across this. That separates the molecules of the hydrogen which creates electricity by moving those two items apart. So from the very basics of this, we move over to something what we have is a chassis dyno. This vehicle here again has a fuel cell in it and we electrolyze pure water at this point here so we can build electricity on board this thing. This then transfers to a program that's on our computer and we can actually design this car by how much battery it needs, if it needs a bigger fuel cell, or if it needs a smaller battery pack based on the vehicle, uh, vehicle weight, and what we're gonna do with the vehicle. Is it gonna be a heavy truck? Is it gonna be a passenger car? So this is again one of the skills that is taught up here based off of general automotive skills that you come to us with. From here, this program would go into something more advanced. So this would be more, more of our advanced side this is an electric car that has a fuel cell, again, as a generator. And what the students would do, again, look at the, the size, design, the body type. What are we going to use it for? And then we, in turn, start building and what we're going to do with it. So the students design and build these products. So this is an actual working vehicle that runs off a of hydrogen fuel electric. From there, the students can decide where they want to go with those skills. Do I want to go to the industry? which we would use in a city. This is a traffic light. This is one of our trainers. The city can now use hydrogen fuel coming into a, a fuel cell, generate electricity, and they can use that to run the city lighting or their traffic signals or emergency systems. So we don't have to rely on the grid for that emergency service. From here, we want to talk about the Tesla side, because I know everybody's excited about Tesla. 
This is a joint venture we have with Tesla here on campus. It'll be our fifth year with this program. So we're gonna go over to the Tesla lab right now so you guys can see how that lab operates and see the vehicles. Welcome back. This is the Tesla lab. This is the part everybody gets excited at. I happen to be sitting in a Model X. This is one of their vehicles that has the Falcon doors on it. It's a very popular feature with families because they can have seven passengers in this vehicle and the seating is very easy and accessible to get to. So this vehicle here has doors that just take eight inches basically and will fit in any parking space. This is a Model X. And behind us we have a couple of the other vehicles. This is the Model S, which is now in a plaid feature. It is one of the fastest production vehicles that is manufactured here in the United States. It goes from zero to 60 in 1.9 seconds, which is very quick. This is the Model 3, which is the third vehicle in its lineup. And then we have a Model Y, which is a brand new feature, which is built off of this chassis. It just gives you an additional 57 square feet of room in it, kind of like a crossover SUV. The program here has a total of 10 cars that are working vehicles. The students take these cars apart from headlight to taillight. You know every nut and bolt. You'll know every program that takes to operate this vehicle. All the sensors, all of the CAN network communications. All the students get a laptop that is issued to them as an employee. And at that time, the vehicles become fully accessible to them to fully look at and understand. In this program here, you're not required to purchase tools, which is different than a lot of the other manufacturers. The tools are provided to you by Tesla. Every service center has the identical tools that we have here in this center. So what you train with here, you would be using in your daily functions in a service center. So as you know the vehicle here, they would know the same tools and equipment they would need to operate and do the servicing in the service center. So this is a unique lab that this lab is set up to work on just the Tesla vehicle. All the toys, all the tools, all the equipment that you see here is all provided to us by Tesla. That is identical stuff that is in their service center. So this is our Tesla classroom, our training center. Students spend a lot of time here. We do a lot of hands-on, we do our virtual, we do a lot of the PowerPoints and some of the service manual training here. So at this point here, the students that are issued those laptops that is theirs to use, the classroom is set up to work on in the Tesla network. So what they would be seeing here would be the virtual that they would be seeing in the service center, identical to, again, what Tesla's format is. So another part of our program here that we just introduced this year is some of the parts and the pieces that in the cars are very intricate and it's hard to get them sometimes. So we've actually introduced 3D laser printing or into the program where we can take a part and make an identical copy of it at about one third the cost of what it takes to get the component. So if we break a clip or we break a piece out on the car or door trim or something, the students can come in here, learn how to basically measure it, put it together on a computer program, put it in our printer, and we can actually print the parts up and put them on the cars that we need. Another unique thing about the Tesla program is we've all heard about FDS or full driving vehicle. East and Tesla uses cameras. We do not use any type of radar or LIDAR or anything else like the other manufacturers. So one of the, the aspects to this is how do we set these cameras up? How do we know that this computer in the car is seeing virtually what the, is happening in front of it? So part of the program is that the students understand how these cameras are put in the vehicles and how the car reads this. It's a very important piece as we now get into the self-driving or fully autonomous car that the vehicles are out there. And this is a very important aspect of training that students are just now getting this technical skills. So we're teaching the skills that the students are going to be seeing in the next five to 10 years, but we're teaching it now. So when they go into their service centers or they do go to the customer's house, they actually are working on some of the newest technology that's not available to a lot of the other manufacturers. 
So besides doing 3D printing of our own parts and our own type of components that are broken, we're now looking into the VR or virtual reality training with the headsets with pre-developed uh, materials that are on it. So the students are now starting to learn with the handsets on the VR so they can take things apart, put it back together in a virtual reality before they touch the cards. And this is one of the reasons we're doing this is the, one of the reasons we're doing this is because of high voltage safety. These cars are 430 volts and I don't want somebody walking out there that doesn't understand that this can literally kill them. So if they do this first and they get into how it's taken apart, put together, how you power the system down, we can do this by virtual reality before they go into a live vehicle. And speaking of that, our students go to other places. We don't just train students to go into a service center and work on a vehicle. They could go into the factory, they could go into engineering, and they can go into product development. So we have students that have graduated out of this program that can go anywhere they want in the United States. Out of this graduating group, they've gone into uh, the Tesla Gigafactory. We've gone into Sparks, Nevada, into that Gigafactory. So we have some students that are working on product development as well as through the service industry side. So one of the other aspects of our program is we are not just male gender on this program. We have about a 13% enrollment of females, and the females actually get placed first. They are, are, are bid by the manufacturers or some of the service centers. They want to see the females because they tend to be a little bit more articulate on how they service a car or work on a car. So that part of our program also is available to the female side. We don't have heavy lifting anymore that we would in the normal manufacturing side. All of the heavy drive units, the battery packs and things are done by robotics, which we have out here in the shop. So again, the, the heavy part of that vehicle or the service of the vehicle is gone. So we can offer this a very high paying job to the female industry as well as we do as the male industry. The other part is vets. We have special funding available for vets. We work with the vets and supply them. We're working with the local work enforcement uh, investment boards to get vets special funding so they can come in here also and be paid. The pain part of this program is that we are a certified uh, certificate of achievement for the state of California Chancellor's Office. So this is a college unit class. 18 units goes on to your college transcript from this course. So we're one of five training centers in the United States, but we're the only one that offers that in California as uh, college credits. Um, the other side of this is scholarships and things like that are still available to you as a student. You have full student benefits here on campus as you would as if you were in any other program here. So I thank you very much for your time and, and doing this short tour of the two different programs. I would like to thank my host, Raina, and she would have a few words. I just want to personally thank you for your vision and building this palace of education I just look so forward to our LA County students graduating with the skills needed to be employed in this 21st century cutting edge career opportunities. So thank you. Thank you so much.